today I want to touch on two sides of the sword. I want to touch on the side of the sword that is awesome, that is what you need, that helps you through the process, that makes you more money, increases the value of your property, increases the value of your rent, and just literally gets the most out of the job and helps speed the process up. But we're also going to look at the side of if you don't do this properly, whether you have an architect or planning person involved or not, there are many scenarios where, you know, people might not be following the process, might not be taking it seriously, might not be understanding, might not be listening, might not be learning from, you know, mistakes or lessons that they're required to learn from. And uh, we're going to we're going to see both sides of the coin. As a very famous person once said, yeah. true intelligence is when you can hold two opposing thoughts in the mind and still be able to function. Yeah, so that is what we want to be able to do today, but also help you guys set off on your journey so you make the right moves in your property investing journey. So let's let's get straight into the thick of it. What is what is the things that mu people must know and must understand if they want to maximize the uh, project, like the investment project? Like I'm just I'm just thinking, getting plans together not necessarily going through planning permission, but how would I know to include that due diligence in my project? Like what are the top things that people must know? Now, not not luxury stuff, but they must know this. They cannot forget this. Do not ignore this. What would you say they are, Adam? I'd say the process is absolutely critical um, because ultimately the process is down to how much time the project takes. Um, obviously time is money. And if, if a project takes you six months from start to finish, or it takes you six years start to finish, you know, there's a hell of a lot more that you can do in those six years than just one project. So it's knowing, it's knowing when to get the right information at the right time and bringing the right people in. Um, you know, for example, we've had, um, you know, a lot of people buy a property and say to us, right, we've had an offer accepted, what do we do? And it's at that point where we'll do a set of initial sketch draft plans which is enough to get the lending um ongoing and mortgage broker can start their process with those plans quickly instead of waiting for a whole set of technical drawings all done and dusted which might take us five six seven weeks to do um which is then taking longer and taking you know a lot longer time to actually buy and, and even start the project um so yeah yeah, so, so you talk so you talk about process. So let's just let's just do some big milestone points that people can maybe make some notes on and say, what are these little checkpoints or milestones that I must like be high like I need them to be highlighted to me. So yeah. I, I this is what I need to pay attention to as I'm preparing all of this and going through. So first of all, find out if you need planning or not because that is a long old process or it can be a long old process. So if you know that you need planning, that needs starting as soon as possible. Um, the other process is just knowing exactly how you can maximize that property and know where you're, where you're going with it. So if you, I don't know, say you pick up an office and you think, right, okay, I can get 10, 12 flats in here. If, uh, if we do it this way, that's fine. Um, but if you, on the flip side then said okay well let's try and do bigger flats and we can only get eight or nine that has a totally different planning strategy there um and it's it's those early questions and knowing where you're actually going and um, that you need to, to think of first so number one would be finding out exactly what where you're going and what your end goal is going to be once you've got that end goal figuring out do you need planning for it figuring out how you're going to finance it um and then starting those processes as early as possible. And then thirdly, finding out how you're going to build it and who's going to do it and, and getting those things in place. So now we've said these are the things you need to look out for. What are, what are some of the disastrous mistakes? First of all, let's, before we go into like the checkpoints, what people need to look out for, what's, yeah. the, what's the biggest blooper in all you know that you've seen what's a bit what's been the biggest <laughs> oh my god like this you know you know to either blew the project up and it was the end of the game or it was just a massive hole in the pocket what was yeah i so 
for me it was one of those exact things where they were just about to uh, there was a client that was just about to exchange on a property and then it was uh you know the mortgage offer was almost there and it was oh does this need planning and they came to us with the site and said oh we're thinking of doing this what do we need to do it's like yeah you need planning um so then that put everything back by three months um which yeah it, it, it was a nightmare it really was but because added to that obviously the pressure of getting everything over the line um it just yeah just made everything stressful for everyone so um you know it's that's probably one of the yeah one of the major things that we had go wrong um we've had problems on site and things like that but all of those things can generally be overcome um but it is it's just having everything to, to start off with all in the right place really yeah absolutely so got a couple of questions coming through so i'm going to put them on the screen so we can uh answer those in a moment but like ultimately what it's going to come down to and as you know because you've been uh you know who real life are you've been to our real training events not we don't yeah. talk, we were just talking about that it's not about talking yeah. about on the treadmill it's about <laughs> working on the treadmill and sweating baby it's like doing the work so you know we, we we do training like real training events where we get our hands dirty and we find the deals and we raise the finance and we go through these processes that you're talking about yeah mm. and one of the things that we have you know taught and done and trained and done in real life is and even uh, training programs we found deals that are in article four areas yeah so here's yeah. a here's a question here you know because we, we've done this ourselves right and you know I, I actually lost count of how many deals we've done in in article four areas and mm -hmm. some people say stay away from this yeah well here, here's here's the here's my version my version is it's easy when you know how Agreed. yeah yeah. So, what, so what's your advice and what's your opinion about working you know in or out of article four areas yeah i think uh it is exactly that it's knowing what you're up against and knowing what it you need to know if if you're working in article four area what are the things that planners and what is the reason for that article four so an article four is to limit how many HMOs are there. It might be to limit other things. You know, an article four might be because it's in a conservation area or, you know, a specific area of, um, of importance. So an article four from a HMO point of view um, is limiting the amount of HMOs in a particular area because there's either too many at the minute um, because it's a sensitive area or because there's not enough parking or, or issues like that. So when it comes to looking at a property, those are the things that you need to be thinking about. How many how many HMOs are in that area? Um, you know, if there if you're on a street and there's ten already on there, well, you're probably not going to get planning for it because you know there's already ten on the street and you don't want a, a street full of HMOs. Um, if if you're looking at an area that's that's got no parking, you know, if you're trying to put a ten bed HMO on a street. I know a lot of HMOs don't have cars, but there's going to be some people that do. So have you thought about how, you know, where those cars are going to be parked and how's it going to impact the neighbours? Um, another big thing, which whether it's an Article 4 area or not, is um, is the neighbours. Um, the neighbours are, they, they can make or break a HMO pro, um, project. Uh, <laughs> and we've had, I'm sure there's, there's countless people who will have, will be able to um, be able to pick up on this that you know if you get on with the neighbors and you help them and you educate them as to what a HMO actually is you know there's there's plenty of neighbors and people out there that have lived in terrace houses for 20 30 years and they've had landlords come and buy a house next to them and turn it into like a slum or a substandard living and Obviously, HMOs nowadays are not like that. You know, they've got they've got nicer facilities than I've got in my house. You not know, all of them. Not all of them. Well, well, there should be. <laughs> anyway, any that us or um, we work on, that's for sure. But this is it. That if you educate the neighbours and help to explain to them that you know we're providing this type of accommodation 
to someone that could be your family member it could be someone that is trying to save for a house deposit or they've just moved to an area and they've got a new job and they need somewhere that's affordable and they've got you know so it helps them get on their feet then a hmo is exactly the type of accommodation for that um and and they need to be everywhere you can't just have hmos all on one street tucked away you know in the edge of a city they've got to be everywhere um so so that is the biggest part of it and if you get the neighbors on board planning is a breeze because everyone's happy and in support of it yeah um we've made a bit of a blunder a couple of times by not engaging with the not engaging with the neighbors or the people on the street yeah, yeah. and uh you like you say it does cause i mean it's never stopped us from doing any projects you know mm-hmm. but it has to cause a headache and just things that you don't need to deal with uh, but something as simple as just going knocking a few doors up one side and a few doors up the other and across the road, just a few doors, you'll, you'll very quickly start to figure out what type of street is it, what type of community is it, you know, are people interested in this type of thing or are they not? And uh, be able to give, like you say, this information uh, that takes people away from the stereotype. And it's, it's something so simple. And that's why we always talk about like doing it. Like experience is the only teacher. You could read as many books as you want. You could, you know, go to as many talks, you know, which are just like, you know, the seminar type things where, you know, people are just talking and speakers coming and all of that. But you've got to get into the work. You've got to do the work. And it's only when you start doing the work, you realize what the real deal is all about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the real deals is uh, regarding like our next question which is sometimes with the process of planning, uh, sometimes it gets put to committee. Yeah, so this is a question here. What's your advice around having your planning go to committee? Do you have any advice on how to prepare? Now, a lot of people get very, um, I don't know, fearful or anxious around this process. Uh, And I think just because, you know, they don't either have the training as of yet or... um, you know, emotion goes up, so mm-hmm. in, so intelligence goes down, and it and it, and it's one of those things that we're conditioned to do by society. Like, oh, if if a governing body says something, then that's the end of that. That must be true, yeah. Or you know, it, it, you know, it, they've got it in for me, and and I think people start manifesting all the bad things. So, how can you set some people straight here, Adam, and actually give us the reality of what? Uh, go into committee actually even means and, and how to deal with that yeah so committee committee is ultimately um, it, it, it puts your application to a vote um, by the councillors and the councillors are all voted in by the neighbours and everyone else um, so they have the neighbours and the, the area's best interests at heart so they're doing what's right for that particular area that your application's in um, so that's it. If you're if you're going to committee, you need to effectively present your application as being beneficial to that area. Um, you know, you you're not saying that we're going to. You know, they're they're looking at whether it's detrimental in some way, and um, whether it be because of parking or be because of the amount of noise or whatever it is. Um, so when you're when you're presenting, if you've got to go and speak at committee or or whatever it might be it's trying to bring it down to that human level again and saying, look, we're not horrible landlords from out of town, just don't care about everyone who's around there. We are trying to make the area better um, and hence why we've we've, we've applied to do this. Um, And I mean, you can even, you know, speak to the councillors before it goes to committee and find out what their concerns are. You know, planning, planning is politics and if you talk to people and get everyone in support of what you want to do, then it, it makes things so much easier. Uh, and hey, listen, anybody who's watching, been on any training, been in our tribe, knows our culture. This is why it's so important to do the right thing for the right reason. Because ultimately, you know, Harvey Property Solutions Group, yeah, the development aspect, you know, our company is The mission is to raise the standard of living, providing luxury, secure accommodation. Yeah, so having that mission always in mind helps us come up with our goals and our targets and the type of products that we want to bring to the market. 
So like you say, when you like, if we ever find ourselves, which we have many times, uh, going to committee, when we ever find ourselves, yeah, we can sit there and happily with conviction and confidence, just talk about what it is exactly we are doing, because it is all based around raising the standard of living. And ultimately, um, just another thing in addition to what you say, to be all prepared, is like, like committees, councils, you know, the government, they have targets. Mm -hmm. They have targets and they want to incentivize anybody to work with them to, towards hitting their targets. Like one of the things, and by the way, thousands of pounds that we got out of this incentive, which is to like stop homes being empty and just rotting away, going moldy and, you know, looking like an eyesore. Yeah, so they actually have a grant, which is an empty homes grant. Yeah, and sometimes they, depending on the council, depending on the situation, sometimes they just give you the money. Yeah, some like low amounts of money, but sometimes it's an interest free uh, loan that they will give you. Yeah, so as much as like that is one example, there are many different incentives that they want to give you. So it is about understanding what's the targets here? Is it increasing the rooms, the amount of housing? Is it incre Is it providing housing with a certain number of parking spaces? Is it, you know, towards some kind of rehabilitation of the area? Like, do you, have you got any other examples, Adam, of what people can to give people some ideas of incentives that's People have. Uh, speaking speaking to social housing providers is definitely one um, because that in itself, you know, if it, I don't know if there's if there's a lot of homeless in a particular area um, and there's you know a need for that type of accommodation, having that or saying that you're working with a with a social housing provider or a charity that goes a long way because you're actually trying to help um, you know an, a problem that's in that area. Um, so so that definitely helps with planning. Thank you.